What's going on, YouTube? Uh, this is going to be the last recording for campaigns. So this is going to be Juniper on hard. We're going to use the same exact formula that we used in every other one. Forsaken. Scale. Like, it gives us an opportunity to, to build kind of willy-nilly and do whatever we want and get going. Forsaken. Welcome to Nova. Easy two workers. Congrats on the uh, win streak, Nomad. So we'll go three worker. They build double. That's right. I think our first send might honestly be on four. Just because they're going to have, for sure, like 180, 190 value. That's going to be relatively wasted on four. Um, it shouldn't be too bad to send four. We'll go five worker here. No problem. We're just going to check out to see what the bot builds here. I'm not concerned about our build whatsoever. We'll be able to do what we've done in the last two videos and just go double Gargoyle and Bone Warrior and we'll be fine. Let's see. Okay, same thing, just double while. I'm just not going to send here. Correct, Darth Popo. Correct. Uh, to go back to the... And this has nothing to do with the video, but... Um, Alex, the issue with that, that send last game was not that Mole Hermit is not good on 21. It's more or less to do with the fact that Mole Hermit doesn't assist much on that wave. With what he has built. Uh, what I'll probably do is I'll... Ooh, Probably just go for a brute on four. We got a 40 here. I'll push six worker. We'll just brute here. We'll have enough to go for a, uh, a butcher next, which is going to be fine. Right, butcher next will be fine. The thing with Nightmare and Butcher is that you have a lot of value in its healing because it attacks so quickly. So going 5 worker off the 20 send here um, is pretty easy to be done. So long as you don't get a massive resend on 4 or 5, you're okay. Um, I think the double consorts will hold. I should be able to go 6 or 7 though on him right now. Um, what I'll do is I'll just income send here. Give me as much potential as possible to hold. We'll see what we get, though. I'm probably going to go um, Butcher in the middle, just like we normally do. Um, and then we'll drop a extra Garg. Uh, rather than on in the side here on the left, we're going to drop it on the right to delay the split. So those extra couple units coming in um, can be quite problematic. Um, in terms of like what up, what units to upgrade in this situation, uh, Popo, the question is, uh, is there a guide from you on what units to upgrade first and in what situation? Uh, the, the biggest thing you need to keep in mind is that the situation is going to change game to game and you need to basically play off of the fact of what you're going to have for value, right? And that's why a guide on that's kind of difficult, um, because your value obviously will change game to game. Um, your income will change, etc. The biggest thing to keep in mind is that upgraded units, for the majority of the time, are going to be stronger than their base 
unit, the base unit. And you just need to kind of try to predict when they're sending. So I know I need to have something for five, so I build uh, Butcher here. I now know my next weakest wave is seven, so I go Green Devil with the extra gold. I could have actually pushed another worker here, realistically, but what I'm trying to do is just trying to scale, right? We're just going for scale. Um, I think my next send is realistically on nine, not um, seven or eight. So what we'll do is we'll income a couple times, scale up, and try to go for a bigger send on nine. Not enough mid here. 40 resend, we push another worker here, no problem. Another consort. Juniper loves her consorts. And honestly, consorts early game are, are super strong, so it makes sense that the bots like to do consorts, right? They're high, high co uh, low cost, high DPS, decent health pool units um, that have a bonus to when they die, they deal like deal damage, right? There's a reason they're a good unit, especially early. What we're gonna do here is probably just go for a, another green devil upgraded. This puts us in a pretty good position for both 7 and 8. Uh, means we're going to be pretty strong 7 and 8. And then if we need to and can't get the um, the Nightmare upgraded to a Doppelganger by 9, now going to a Head Chef makes these guys a lot stronger on 9 as well. We'll see what they build here. They might be weak enough next to send. Just another unit like that. Um, we might just go for a dino next, just because I want the income. Right? Like, with my build, it's all income dependent. I'm just seeing here, like, right, like, the majority of his units are Pierce aside from the Wild Shrooms. The Dino is going to be strong then against both Wild Shrooms and all the Pierce damage. Um, so the whole entire idea is just continue to scale. We're in an awkward position here where I'd, like, I'd want to build here, but I also don't want to, like, overbuild. So I'm just going to do a Gate Guard on the left. It gives me a little bit more tank value, right? Not really a tank in the traditional sense, but it's something. Um, another option we could have also done is go for a a dark mage, or yeah, dark mage here, um, somewhere in the back. It's similar in value, right? About a hundred, but uh, would have been still just the same, good enough. So no send here against the AI. Okay. We're a little off getting the not a doppel here. I mean, it looks like they're going to leak, though. Depending on, obviously, the aggro with the, the damage. So we might be able to get the doppel in time now, just because this leak. So we're going to be able to push... One more unit out. That's 40 value. How much are we gaining from this? Enough, actually. I didn't even have to send here. Wow. I look at and I see PTA, Lizard Army, loan. Right now, my go-to send wave is probably going to be either 11, 12, or 13 on this, right? Not, not 10. Because 10, the consorts, and the rangers can deal quite a bit of damage. I look at 11, and I see that the consorts and everything are pretty weak here. Right? Consorts are pretty weak here um, in terms of damage typing. Same thing with the wild shrooms, and they built another consort. So what I might just do is go 13 now. 13 is pretty strong against um, against what they have. And I can go Lizard Army. I can go Lizard Army and just kind of scale into late now. Um, Consort Spam, realistically, you just got to look at it and find, okay, it's Pierce. What waves does, is Pierce bad on and what waves 
do does the 300 uh 280 i think it is damage that it does really matter or not matter and um for the most part surprise surprise wave 13 is really good for that because the consorts don't do a whole lot of damage the 300 health that you get from killing them or you kill 300 280 damage that it is, gets from killing them um isn't very important either Buzzes are strong early, but like most tier 1s, they fall off somewhere around wave 10. So if you can just plan around that fall off point, you're most likely fine. No send here, that's to be expected. They go Daphne. So what I'll probably do is I'll just income send here and then go 13 with Lizard Army. Mostly because I'm kind of bad on 13, uh, excuse me, 11, excuse me. Um, which makes sense, right? My majority of my damage is Pierce, and the majority of my tank line is Swift. Um, I might have actually been able to get them here if I tried. So we're going to go a single Dino, and then just three Snails. We'll go Lizard Army. Upgrade this guy. I don't necessarily can like doing this here, but I think I need to get the double healing on the Butcher on the from the Butchers on the Doppel right now. Um, and having that single unit in the split to even it out. Really doesn't matter on a ranged wave in the same way it would other waves. So we're going to send just another dino. I might be able to get my guy here. So it's worth trying. Um, the reason why I'm snail spamming in this situation is because it slows down both the Daphne's and the consorts from dealing damage to the back waves. Um, because there's a lot of small units now that they have to, to work through. They do drop a bunk, so bunk will be fine to carry them on this wave. But come 13, it won't be enough. If you think the person, like if you know the person has a bunk in this situation, I don't send snails. I go um, dinos and cannoneers then in that spot. It still looks like it's going to leak them though. Yeah, that's actually a huge leak on them. I do leak pretty bad though too. Because I put another another Nightmare eventually in this spot. So the reason why you pl place the Butcher here and not here is that you have another unit you can place in this spot that will get double buffed. And that double buff will be more important as you go on. We're going to reroll here, so if we get any ta like, tanks. We do get Desert Pilgrim, but it really isn't worth it in this situation. I don't think the game will last long enough to, before it matters. So you can place a, a, a nightmare right here, and that's why you place the head chef and stuff in the situation, in the orientation I do. So I'm just gonna go for. Um, I'm just gonna go for a uh, ascend on four, 13 now, and go for the kill, go for the win. We're strong on 13, and I really doubt they'll be able to leak me this next coming wave. Um, but yeah, so a question from chat here. Um, why does the buff stack? It doesn't stack because in the traditional sense, right? It's a different aura. It's not the same aura because it's a different unit. The upgraded version of a unit and the base version of a unit that are auras have different names and different ability. To, uh, that's like coinciding with them. We're just going to send a pack. It doesn't really matter. Um, and that rule applies for any type of unit that has an aura, yes. So Butcher and uh, Head Chef, MPS, APS, yeah, they all work. Um, but Leviathan does stack twice, but that's also stated in its, in its ability. You just got to read that stuff. Reading the abilities is super important. Take some time to go through the codex and, and read all that stuff. Super, super important. Oh, Haven. Wow. Gets the buff by the uh, Lost Chieftain. I didn't expect Lost Chieftain here. Oh, we're killing the Ogre right away. That's actually perfect. I have no, no reason not to hold here. 
You'll notice the consorts don't really do a whole lot on this wave. It's kind of exactly why I wanted to send here. And this should be game. Uh, if you don't know where the codex is, check out my YouTube channel, and I have an entire video about the codex. Exclamation point codex, I believe. Otherwise, uh, you can find it on the home screen in the bottom left. What's the best spell generally? Um, there's not really a general best spell. It depends heavily on your builds. There you go. That's kind of it. Juniper is actually a lot easier than um, some of the early ones, in my opinion. Uh, the biggest thing is the build just solely relies upon the fact that Wild Shroom and can uh, and Consort are really good early game. But as soon as they fall off, you can just uh, punish them super hard for that. You can punish them super hard for the fact that they have like nothing for this wave, right? Um, same thing with Eleven, really. We just... These stop being good. And then we slow down and, and stop them from being able to deal damage to the wave with a bunch of spam. Um, for the most part, though, that's kind of it um, for this video. If you enjoyed the content, please like, subscribe, drop a comment if you have anything that you want to see next time. Otherwise, I'll uh, catch you all later. Peace.